When you look at the Kren M2S, you might think Zhiyun has released the killer gimbal, the best smartphone or compact camera gimbal. First impressions, this thing looks really good. But we're still digesting the Kren M3 when Zhiyunai releases the Kren M2S. And if you were already confused as to what gimbal to buy for your smartphone, or bought one recently for that matter, Having another gimbal out only a few weeks after the release of the Kren M3 doesn't help things at all. Xeon is a big corporate company and they're pretty good at what they do. So when the price difference of the M2S is around $100 less than the Kren M3, and it appears that both gimbals share the same or similar internal components, well, that price difference has to show somewhere. You see, this is a good gimbal, but, and there is always a but, if you recently bought a Kren M3, a G6 Max, or similar type of gimbal, I'm here to tell you, don't rush to return it thinking that this is the gimbal you should have. It's hard not to compare it to the Kren M3 when it's only been four months since the M3 was released. The M2S shares a lot with the M3, as you can clearly see, and when you look at it for the first time, it's impossible not to notice the similarity. So, how similar or different these two gimbals really are? Well, starting with the size and weight, you can clearly see that the M2S is smaller and at 549 grams, you get a gimbal that is roughly a third lighter than the M3. And you can genuinely feel the difference. Although we're not talking here kilos or pounds of weight difference. I mean, we're talking grams and ounces, depending on which part of the world you're in. So it's all relative, really. To me, the M3 is already a lightweight gimbal as it is, so this is just a bit lighter. But it's in the size and weight difference where the key functionality differences are. You see, the devil is always in the detail, and although the M2S is literally a stripped down version of the Kren M3, some people might find that it's that which renders the gimbal unusable for them. Let me explain it. The M2S is a very simple and easy gimbal to use. It really is as simple as it gets, to be honest with you. And it's that simplicity, among other things, that some people might have a problem with. Because to make something so simple to use, you need to compromise somewhat. Especially if on top of it, you shave $100 from the price tag. You know, you can't have it both ways. Something's gotta give. Think of uh, driving an expensive car from your favorite brand and then drive a cheaper car from the same brand. Both cars have four wheels, seats, steering wheel, an engine, suspension, and so on. Both take you from point A to point B, and you could argue that roughly at the same speed and probably time, but there is a big difference in terms of the actual experience when driving either one of them. The same applies here. You need to decide what's the experience you're after because there are things that you won't be able to do with the M2S. Now, on the other hand, you will have no problem whatsoever with the M3. In terms of balancing and setting up, this is as simple as with the Kren M3. Balancing is fairly quick and easy because they share the same ergonomics. But this is where the $100 price difference starts to show because the Rolex bar is smaller than in the M3. So if you use a heavy phone like the iPhone 13 Pro Max or Samsung S22 or similar heavy phones, you might find yourself in the unexpected situation that if you want to use a phone case, a lens and a filter, well, the gimbal just can't handle it. You might need to mount the phone upside down. Now, this in itself is not a big thing. I personally find these gimbals perform better when you mount things upside down. But in itself, if you balance an iPhone 13 Pro Max, a Salmar case, which is fairly lightweight, and just a filter, you're right at the limit of what the Rolex is bark and balance. If you use a heavy phone case like the one from Smallrig, you won't even be able to balance the phone upright, which I find shocking because we're talking of just the phone, a case, and a filter. And to make matters worse, you may also find that you can't balance the phone upside down either because, and this is depending on the case that you use, there is not enough clearance on the base plate itself to allow for the filter to be mounted upside down. <laughs> it's fine with a lens, there is no issue with clearance there, but with a filter alone, well, you might just not be able to balance it. And this is to me a serious problem because you spend this much money on a gimbal and you shouldn't have to worry about whether you can mount this or that accessory. 
You should never have to worry about any of these things. But with the M2S, you do, which is a real shame, really. But again, this is where you start to see why the price difference between the M3 and the M2S. And if so far you find this video helpful and think that other people will benefit from watching it, help spreading the word by hitting the like button. And trust me, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, back to what really matters. Look, the M2S is no doubt a shameless simplification of the Cren M3. I mean, Xiyun has stripped down all the fancy and useful functionality that you get with the M3 and given you a gimbal that can do what a gimbal is supposed to do and period. The menu is super basic. You basically get calibration settings, three basic motor or joystick speed settings, and that's it. All in one single menu screen. This is as simplistic and minimalistic as you can get, and yet, this is really all you need. The problem is that, again, probably in order to cut costs, the screen itself is really small and dim, shockingly dim. And in my opinion, this means that this gimbal is not fit for outdoors use. You'll have no problem using it in indoors, at night, in low light conditions, in dark cloudy days and so on. But if you take this gimbal outdoors on a bright sunny day, forget about seeing anything on the LCD screen. And this is another serious problem because you really can't see shit, man. <laughs> I mean, you literally have to block the light to get even a glimpse of what the screen is showing. So trying to make any adjustments on the fly or changing modes is pretty much a bit of a lottery. And again, this is another area where you see why the $100 difference because the screen on the Cren M3 is really bright and you don't have to worry about whether you are indoors or outdoors. In terms of buttons, again, very minimalistic. You get the menu button, the on-off switch, the mode button, and the record button if you use a compact camera that is supported by the gimbal. For the smartphones, the record button is of no use, at least at this moment in time, which is a shame because it would have been really nice to get that functionality when using the app. Precision has told me that they're working on it. The joystick is okay, but you can only do panning and tilting. You don't have the ability to access or adjust the roll axis, which again, is a shame because that is a really useful setting to adjust on the fly. Economically, it's comfortable to hold and use, and it's smaller than the M3, although by very little. I do prefer the locks for the motors in the M2S than in the M3. I find them a lot easier to find and to operate, so that's nice. Especially when you need to lock or unlock when moving around or when getting ready for a shot. It goes without saying that you don't have any restrictions of movement whatsoever, so you can do whatever shot or angle you have in mind. And the gimbal actually operates very smoothly, as you would expect. In terms of modes, you get all the usual ones, and the mode button is mapped to the pan follow, the lock and follow mode. If you double tap the end button, you get the POV, and if you double tap again, you get the vortex or inception mode. If you hold the reset button at the back, you access the sports or the go mode. Essentially, all the modes you'll ever need, really. Most people will probably ever use the first three, and that's probably why Z mapped them to the end mode, so you can access them very quickly. Now, in regards to sound, and going back to the issue I mentioned earlier about the shorter roll axis bar, this is a knock-on effect of such a compromise. Because the bar is shorter and you struggle to balance a phone with any accessories, if you try to record the sound on board with the phone mounted up, right? Well, the phone has to slide out to accommodate the cable, and that limits what accessory or accessories you can use. If you mount the phone upside down, you have the sound port in the clear, yes, but you might run into the balancing issues that I mentioned earlier in the bit. This is a real shame because, again, this is another area where you need to be worrying about something that you shouldn't really. Okay, so you can easily vlog with this gimbal, okay? It's super straightforward. You just need to triple tap and the gimbal will spin in the uh, vlogging mode. And now I'm vlogging. Really simple, straightforward. The stabilization is really good. The only thing you need to be aware of is as light as this gimbal is. The moment you put a phone case, filter, and the weight of the gimbal, if you do this for a long time, it will get heavy. Another thing that you need to be aware of and it's unavoidable, the moment you pull this out, you'll stand out like a sore thumb. So people will be looking at you. It's not compact anymore, but it does a really good job, really super lightweight, and the quality is really good. 
One fancy feature you get just as with the M3 is the onboard built-in LED light. Although in the M2S it's not by color, it's daylight only. And if it was me designing the gimbal, I would have made this light tungsten rather than daylight because in all fairness, you're most likely to be using this light at night or indoors in low light situations. And most of the times, the light around in these situations is tungsten so you will need to be carrying with you the little filter gels that you get with the gimbal which i bet most people will lose pretty quickly personally i don't think this is practical and i bet you'll probably never use the onboard light ever because honestly during the day a 1000 lumens light does nothing with all that daylight around Okay, so I'm going to show you why a 1000 lumens LED light does pretty much nothing in daylight, okay? So, I'm going to now turn on the light and this is at its lowest setting, okay? So, as you can clearly see, there's almost absolutely nothing on my face. I'm just going to increase the brightness and it's now at a maximum and you might just about see a glimpse of it, okay? So, I'm just going to turn it off. And as you can clearly see, the effect is negligent. And this is on a bright daylight, but with the sun filtered through clouds. If I had the sunlight hitting directly my face, you would not see any difference whatsoever. So this light, on a bright daylight, on a sunny daylight, almost on a pretty much any conditions outdoors during the day, it's useless. And what about the app, you might ask? Well. Everything works as you would expect, and in that regard, the ZY Play app is just like any other camera app. The manual settings might be a bit tricky to get access to and operate, but in all fairness, you're most likely to use a third-party app like Filmic Pro, ProTech or some other. With this gimbal, you don't really need to use the Zune app at all, except if you want to do time lapses. And this is where you'll come across another rather big problem. Okay, so we're gonna try to do now a time lapse, okay? And this is a real problem with the Zuna, okay? Because it just doesn't work. Okay, so we're gonna come here and we're gonna do application mode and we're gonna come and we're gonna say moving time lapse, okay? So we're gonna set a key point there, okay? And another one there, okay? Nothing unusual, it's something very very simple and straightforward two points okay so now uh, we're gonna come next and here we can see that we, i can adjust the um, the time interval so let's say that i want it every three seconds again nothing unusual but if i now come to the duration i can't change the duration of the time lapse it's locked at 30 seconds <laughs> No matter what you do, you can't change that. I've tried about 15, 20 times and occasionally, very randomly, I get it to change. But obviously, when I go back and try and redo it so that I actually do the right settings, I, I can't change it anymore. So this is a real problem if you want to do time lapses with this gimbal because it's locked at 30 seconds and that's just not good enough because when you want to do a time lapse, you want it to go on for an hour, two hours or even longer. So this is a real problem and Zio knows about it. They told me that they're gonna do something about it, they're working on it. But at this moment in time, if you wanna do time lapses with this gimbal, forget it. So with all this in mind, who do I think this gimbal is good for? Well, the M2S costs around $269, the M3 is $369. Personally, I don't think this gimbal is worth the money cost. It's hard for me to recommend a gimbal with the issues like the LCD screen that is not bright enough, the potential balancing problems because of the short roll axis bar, the stripped down basic functionality, and an app that doesn't really allow you to do time lapses properly or at all. I would strongly suggest the Kren M3 or an alternative gimbal. I know that every other review on YouTube is raving about this gimbal, and to be honest with you, I'm baffled by this. It could well be that maybe my opinion of what a good gimbal should be is totally different than what most people out there think or expect, but $269 is a fair amount of money and money doesn't grow on trees these days. I would feel pretty upset if I spend that kind of money and experience these issues. I don't know, it's hard to say because I do like the fact that it's so simple and easy to use, but there is no getting away from these issues. 
maybe this gimbal is just isn't suited for smartphones but for APS-C and small compact cameras although you would still experience the same issue so I don't know what do you think would you be able to work through all these issues that I've just mentioned let me know in the comments below I would love to hear what you think because maybe where I see an issue you don't and you know it could just well be that but if you're still undecided and would like to know whether the big brother the Kren M3 is a better fit for you you can watch the review here which I think you'll find very helpful and I'll show you why I think it's such a great smartphone gimbal so go watch that next and let me know what you think